Have you ever looked upon a truly spectacular sunset but left speechless? Or had your breath literally taken away by the majesty of a mountain valley? For me, it's the elegance of this miraculous planet that will forever result in awe. My addiction to being in awe has often left me contemplating the question, what exactly is awe in the first place? It seems the same question puzzled the renowned philosopher Immanuel Kant when he opened his treatise on practical reasoning by writing, two things fill me constantly with increasing admiration and awe the longer and more earnestly I reflect on them. The starry heavens without and the moral law within. The legendary C.S. Lewis wrestled with the same problem in his book, The Problem of Pain. He wrote, you would feel wonder and a certain shrinking, a sense of inadequacy to cope with such a visitant and a prostration before it, an emotion which might be expressed in Shakespeare's words, under it, my genius is rebuked. He goes on to write, this feeling may be described as awe and the object which excites it as the numinous. His words are honestly the closest I've come to understanding what awe is. Regardless of my addiction to something I can't adequately explain, I can say without a shred of doubt how awe influences my life. Indeed, it is my awe of this planet that drives my pursuit of a science that studies it. As a geologist, I've devoted much of my life to seeking better understanding of this planet and that which awes me. So where does art fit into all this, you ask? Well, it's my humble opinion that art is simply our inevitably inadequate effort to communicate awe. I think we seek to speak the language of awe through our art, which for me makes science and art inextricably connected.